very careful the greens go way around them and also here. We want the students to understand paper as a material and how it's been manufactured and then we want them to be able to translate that information into art objects. Paper is a ubiquitous material, but originally paper was made in very small amounts by hand, and it's good for them to understand the range of kinds of papers that have ever been available and what they've been used for. We are interested in knowing the history of the objects because that's interesting to us. But um, the book is, uh, was written about Buffalo in 1825. He's trying to tell the history of Buffalo up to that point. And then he said some people had told him that he should write the history. And so until somebody more qualified comes along to tell the history of Buffalo, he, this is what he knows. In the first part of the first semester, the students reenact. Um, the making of various materials in art, the technologies involved in making those materials. And by the end of the semester, they've reenacted so many of the ways that art can be made that when they finally get an art object in their hands, they have a real visceral understanding. Paper conservation has expanded so much over the last 20 years. There are more specialized conservators who do specialized kinds of objects. Any of that shrinking up of the Japanese paper, you know, just this presence there can sometimes cause the warping of the photograph itself. Both the adjunct professors come to Buffalo for a workshop twice a semester. The photograph conservator is Gary Albright. So a student is able to major in photographs conservation with his help and my um, advisement. If we could thin it so it wasn't quite so orange, that would be a better look. And what's great about it is it's decorated to look like a leather binding. James Reed Cunningham is our adjunct faculty person for the rare books conservation. 19th century binding, which has been stamped in red. Jim comes and leads the students through the history of binding structures. Just glued down onto the back of this piece of paper. And the students have to quickly identify what the binding structures are and then what the problems are inherent with those structures. And the fact that they are not full-time professors is, is often very good too because they're still very active in their discipline and they're communicating with other working professionals. We would have interns come to us at the different museums where I worked, and I always thought, oh, my intern is the best intern ever. But it turns out all the students are that great. And it makes me feel really good because they are so smart and so good that we're turning our field over to a great bunch of people.